Hi guys and welcome to Thankful Thursday with me, Cal as usual. So I actually cannot get over how different my hair looks on the camera to how it looks in real life, it's really strange. But anyway, on to today's video. This week we have been looking at basically what I put under the umbrella of when eating disorder meets life. So I suppose these are things that you would find, you know, as you go further into recovery and start trying to engage in normal life again. Um, I am actually going to be reading some notes I created, I kind of created a list of everything I wanted to include in this video so I didn't miss anything because I think the question that I have is quite a big topic. So the specific question that I have is how do you deal with stressful life situations slash hurtful events, those ones that make you feel sick with worry without turning back to your eating disorder behaviours. So first of all, I wanted to suggest to those of you that haven't seen it that you go check out the mindfulness videos that we all did a couple of months back now, if you haven't already seen those. And they are talking about using mindfulness as a way to cope with difficult situations. And that's something that I find really helpful, but I didn't want to go back over the same ground. So if you haven't already seen that, do go and check it out. I will try and find it myself and I will put it down in the bottom bar if I am able to do that. So on to the topic. Um, I wanted to carry on with the point of identifying what it is that's stressing you out. I often think that we say things like everything's stressful or I'm just stressed or everything's hectic at the moment and you don't necessarily identify specifically what it is that is causing you stress or distress or what it is that you're specifically worried about com that comes with a certain event or a certain experience and we just kind of put it under this umbrella term that it's stressful and I find it really helpful to identify you know specifically what the problem is for me. For example, the example I came up with was if you think about your exams at school, you might be getting really stressed out about your exams and therefore you say my exams are really stressful, but what it actually is that you're finding stressful is perhaps a concern, a worry, a fear even that you have of failing and if you identify that, that your fear is actually of, of the exam but your fear is of failing, you can kind of reassure yourself by looking back over, you know, exams you've done in the past, how I failed before, should I actually be worried, or am I doing okay, do I understand this subject, is there a good chance that I'll be doing okay, and I think that that can take the pressure off if you do that. Something else that's really important is that you take responsibility for a situation, for your feelings, for um, how you feel toward a situation, toward an event because it's quite easy to say I'm stressed out because of and blame somebody else and that disables you from feeling you can do something about the situation. If you, if you own your feelings then you're more likely to be able to do something about it. So those of us that have or have had an eating disorder cope, usually cope with any stress, obviously via our eating disorder. And once you've dealt with your eating disorder, stressful situations are still going to happen, you know. Everything that I'm saying in this video is going to indefinitely be relevant to your life because you don't just recover and live in a bubble of happiness forever. So you do need to replace your coping mechanism of an eating disorder with you know, some other way of coping. And you guys who have gone or have heard me talk about writing um, quite a lot in videos I've created because I find writing really helpful to me. But some people find exercise in healthy amounts, some people find some of the creative outlet like something arty. Some people find being with a specific person, perhaps a young relative, something like that, something that helps you, you know, calm down and feel a little bit better. But in terms of um, giving sort of some practical advice in this video, because obviously that type of replacing your coping mechanism is going to be very um, personal to you, is that you can break down a situation, an event, a feeling that's causing you stress and your way of coping that into two areas in terms of 
what you're able to do to help yourself and that is you can either change the situation or you can change your response to the situation. So to start with you can avoid unnecessary stress if that's possible, you can say no to a commitment if it's going to create you additional stress or perhaps you could change something, you could compromise with somebody about a deadline or you could change your environment. If we go back to the school one, something that I used to find really stressful was sitting in the library doing my uni work, doing an assignment and people being quite noisy and chatty in that environment. So, you know, I could pack up my stuff and I could move or I could ask those people to be quiet. So I'm doing something that essentially is avoiding what was causing me the problem, the people causing all the noise were causing me the problem and I can do something about that and change that. Something else that I also find really helpful and I think I got this from my nan is I like to-do lists and um, to-do lists can be great because it feels good when you tick something off you know the list that you've done so I think that's good. But the other thing with to-do lists as well is you need to be practical there's only so much one person can do in one day so if you have you know a list this long that you need to get done in the next day and one of those activities is going to take you six hours then you're putting an unrealistic expectation on yourself and what you're going to have to do is break that down. You're going to have to prioritise what's most important and rechange the list. You know, the rest is going to have to wait till tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and you're going to have to break it down like that. Obviously something that I have to say in this video or feel I have to say is that it's always important to share how you're feeling and express your feelings. If using this idea of school being stressful, again, if you're stressed about that, I guarantee you the majority of people in your class are also stressed. If you're going to an event where you've got to talk and you're stressed about that, then I guarantee you somebody else in that same situation would be feeling that same thing, you know? If you can share those feelings, then you don't feel so alone in it, and somebody that knows you better than we do creating these videos might be able to help you more practically might be able to say come on let's go for a walk together and that might be helpful or they can talk you through their specific experience of talking at the same event or doing the same exam or whatever. Um, something else that is really important is that you look at the bigger picture. You know you might be freaking out about talking at an event, about doing an exam, about attending a celebration perhaps if there's food involved and you're worried about people seeing you and things like that. I don't know, but if you look at the bigger picture, you know, you kind of reframe your perspective on the situation and ask yourself, you know, how important will this be next year? How important will this be in five years? You know, the, the feeling of freaking out. How important will this exam be in five years? How important will it be that I got embarrassed and turned back red when I, was in front, when I was talking in front of a group of people. If you ask yourself that type of question, it can, oh my camera's just gone really pink, never mind. It can help you, um, you know, it can relieve some of the stress when you realise perhaps the situation you're finding stressful isn't as huge as it might feel in, in the moment. And something else that I've learned in my most recent from my most recent therapist is about the pressure that we put on ourselves with the language that we use so using words like should you know I should do this and if you say it would be nice if I could do that or I'd like to be able to do that you know just changing the language can change your perspective of the situation and your feelings around it because a word like should puts a lot of pressure on you whereas if it's something you'd like to do then it kind of gives you a different type of incentive to coping with the situation if you see what I mean. One of the last things that I want to say is about dealing with situations that you can't change and I guess say a family event that you have to go to, you know that your parents are saying like you are going to this, say you're being a bridesmaid at a wedding and that's going to mean eating in front of people, you can't change that. You have a commitment to go and you're going to go and you're freaking out and you don't know how you're going to deal with it what what is really helpful is to say to yourself you know i can't change this because you're going to put so much effort and energy into thinking how can i change it when you absolutely can't that you're making the issue even bigger within yourself because you're 
panicking about doing something that you can't do and you know if you focus on the more practical things that you can do within that situation then that's going to be better for example sharing your feelings with somebody having a plan to you know go outside and take a break or whatever it might be and then there's also you know the little things you can do like that like taking a break writing like i've said bring a friend and have a chat and calm down talk about something totally irrelevant to everything else talk about your favorite shoes and something else that i would love for you guys to all do is to remember to do something that you enjoy every single day because then that can help you distress it can you've done something for yourself every single day it might be reading a book before you go to bed having a nice bath before you go to bed something like that and i think doing those self-care things when everything in life is really stressful is really important because you can forget about yourself and just be head stuck in the stress and running around and never take the break but you know just 10 minutes out can make a huge difference to you and doing something that you enjoy as well so this video i suspect has been quite long and it ended up being in two parts so i'm going to stop there i hope you guys are doing well and i'll see you all next week take care bye